My dudes, what's going on? Welcome to the World 1 5 Minutes or Less series, where we go through every world and explain ideally how to tackle it moving forward for the smoothest Eidolon experience. I thought we needed more beginner guides to help new people get into the swing of things. So, let's get into it. Let's start off by explaining the skilling in World 1. What is smithing? Smithing is a skill that will be used to produce material and craft gear. Click on the anvil and go to the production tab, and click on the thread to start producing thread. Thread is the easiest way to get XP for smithing for your characters. At the bottom of the production tab, you can find the spend points button that will help increase the cap or speed or even XP for your production that ultimately helps your smithing skill. I would suggest to mostly put your points into speed per hour to produce. Faster, higher production equals bigger XP. Also, Archer's specialty is smithing. Next up is mining and chopping. These are the two sources materials to make stuff within crafting and other upgrades discussed later like stamps. Specific classes are efficient in each skill. Mage for chopping and warrior for mining. For mining, you'll put your ores in the forge to start cooking bars. And your forge can be upgraded with money, such as multi-bar chance, ore capacity, extra forge slots, etc. Now let's talk about progressing smoothly throughout World 1. Three key elements that are essential to progress is defense, accuracy, and damage. Accuracy can be attained through talents of the subset. For example, Warrior is Wisdom, Archer is Strength, and Mage is Agility. This will help you hit mobs 100% of the time. If you want to know what your accuracy percent is, you can find it in the AFK menu at the bottom right. So the two most prioritized talents would be your Substat, so you can hit 100% of the time, and Sharpened Axe, which will give you weapon power, which increases your damage. Think of weapon power as a stronger version of base damage. When you're ready for a more advanced guide on that, I have a combat guide that will show all the sources later on. The little icon with the number on the top of the portal is the amount of kills you need in order to unlock it. As you progress, this number will get higher. Make sure to do the Scriptus questline, which will help you get to the World 2 and also explain key mechanics on how to craft and help you get armor and better weapons. There are two types of quests. There's the blue exclamation mark that is a secondary optional quest and a yellow exclamation mark that is the story quest. You want to make sure to always do the story quest. If you're taking too much damage, you can use food such as nomwiches. Select your inventory and then click on the food tab and you drag and drop the nomwiches into one of those slots. When you hit a percentage of health, they will heal automatically, but they do have an internal cooldown. When you get a little bit of money, your first purchase should be the target stamp and the shield stamp from World 1 Shop and take into Mr. Piggy Bank and you can upgrade these stamps for materials and money that will boost defense and accuracy to make your life a little bit easier. The next purchase you want to buy is the sculpting tool from World 1 Shop that can unlock to the use of statues. Walk up to the marble and drag and drop the sculpting tool on top of the marble to make the NPC appear. You'll get statues from skill and combat to be used here to help progression. Stamps can also drop from skilling and mobs and quests, so make sure to complete the quest at least on one character to obtain all the stamps. Coliseum is located at Froggy Fields. Do the quest line right next to the Coliseum to earn your first tickets, but don't do it right away, but make sure to return every day for free Coliseum tickets. Also at the bottom of the map is the portal to the party dungeon. Refer to my World 1 Dungeon God Guide to explain further. Further. Great place to get damage, talent points, etc. So every new character starts off as a beginner. Get that character to level 10 and head over to the Valley of the Beans, where the first class advancement is here. You want one of each class to start, so warrior, archer, and mage. If you kill enough monsters or farm enough materials, something will be dropped known as a card. You start off with four card slots which can be found in your codex under cards. Double click the card to add the card to give them a boost of damage, health, etc. Collect enough cards of the one type, they will get upgraded and get a star on them. That will make the effect that much stronger. You also have a card set. Once you collect enough of them, you can only use one card set at a time. The cards will also have the mob's health, the accuracy needed, how much damage, and how many times you've killed the mob per character. Once you've crafted some armor and some weapons and levels, for a good amount of accuracy and damage, you'll move all the way across the map to the Enroaching Forest Villa, which is the place of the first boss known as Amarok. It requires a key to enter that can be attained from the ghost after doing his quest line, and you get one daily key per completion, so make sure to complete this quest on every character because we will be farming this boss later on. There's a door right next to the ghost, which is the boss room door. After you've done the quest line, go into your inventory and consume the key. You'll be able to redeem the key at the boss room. Defeat the boss to obtain the gem and return to main town and give it to the bird at the top right, and congrats, World 2 is unlocked. And while you can go to World 2, there is one last thing in World 1 for you to acquire at the top of the tree. 
The tree entrance is located at the jungle perimeter, aka Slime's map. Make your way all the way to the very top. You'll see a telescope, interact with it to unlock star signs. Make sure to talk to the NPC with all your characters to unlock for all of them. This is another boost to your character progression and is very important. I also have a star sign guide I would suggest watching before committing because you only have a set amount to use. One more thing, if you're looking for easy cash and fast levels, Farming wooden sticks is a great place because you can sell the monster materials for money because they aren't really used for anything, and this place will help you get to up to at least level 50 at a quite fast pace. Baba Yaga and the sewers will be mentioned in World 2 when you get a little bit stronger. There you go, my dudes. World 1 explained in 5 minutes or less. I thought I would do a more beginner guide for the people that are just starting, help them understand the game a little bit more, and not feel so overwhelmed and confused. So if you like the content, make sure to sub, like, and hit the bell for future notifications, and make me a happy man. Anyways, my dudes, tune in for the next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy grinding, and peace out.